So in this section we're going to be looking at uh, making a montage and adjusting layouts and uh, we're going to show you how to kind of basically either lay up one image uh, on top of another image or actually go to a certain size and so on with it. So let me first of all just close this uh, image down and the other one in the background and we'll go and open up from scratch. So uh, let's go and choose the uh, orange photograph that we just saw and basically we want to actually just say kind of do a two image side by side layup so the quickest way to do it would be go to file and open go and choose the other photograph that you want anyone yep now at this stage we're with the move tool uh, which is uh, just here at the top yeah V is the shortcut of course you can see these kind of uh, palettes uh, open up when you hover o over a tool and then we're just going to drag it and hold it above the actual um, other tab at the top. If I uh, then just release it, it drops it anywhere. Um, I'll show you how to set, uh, centralize it in perfect overlay in a minute. Now the first thing that we can see is that this image is too big in the vertical compared to the horizontal of the image and that is because um, they're taken and basically not cropped in camera, not crop cropped in post-production so theoretically their pixels are the same size so if I was to rotate this image in a horizontal it would basically actually fill this photograph but because I've dragged in a vertical image uh, with the same pixels on top of a horizontal image of the same pixels basically this is going to look too too big so we're going to need to um, either crop this image before we drag it on or we'll go into transform it when it's actually on the actual background itself so for instance if I was doing a simple kind of uh, card here for the actor um, I might want to actually just lay up two by two as it were side by side and I might want to make the headshot here basically the main photograph so if I wanted this image now the orange image in the background to move over slightly um, I basically can't do it so if I select the background image and I try and move it I can't do it because it's locked over on here on the right hand side of the palette we, we can see that it's locked so if I just unlock that now I can actually drag the image. Now I should say that because we've got the auto select layer ticked at the box here when we're in the move tool I can basically go ahead and actually choose any of the images uh, and straight away it selects that layer. However if I uncheck that auto select layer box when I go to actually move say the top layer here it, it's not going to work until I go over and select the actual layer on top the layer one as it were now I can actually move move it so if you're working with lots of layers and they're easy to distinguish definitely have the or uh, the auto select layer on there's another tip as well especially if you've got layers um, and you're masking them and they're kind of mer merging together which will cover in future episodes um, but you can kind of right click and here it basically shows you the different kind of layers that you're actually above okay so uh, in in this case I could just right click on it if I right clicked it here layer one is the one top layer and of course if I was to name this headshots just by double clicking into the layer file and now I kind of right click you can see it actually takes on the actual layer name so um, first first of all what we did there was kind of drag in an image on top of another image um, but because it was too big it basically fills the frame as you can see here okay zoom tool um, because sometimes you're going to drop an image on it. it's going to be so big you can't see actually where the end is so um, the zoom or Z is the actual um, shortcut and if you kind of just click on it as normal you'll basically keep on enlarging it until it gets to uh, pixel and then it can't go actually any closer at all with it and things really okay so it's going to be to a point where I can't go any closer mark give up okay and that's going to be sig signified by the actual uh, magnifying glass without a plus or a minus in it if I want to work the other way I just press the alt key and I can kind of zoom out. Now there is a slower way to do this of course which would be to go up to the magnifying glass options here and whereas by default it's highlighted onto the plus we could highlight it onto the 
uh, min uh, the minus here and basically we can actually click through. I would usually leave it on plus by design and then as far as the uh, rest is concerned we can start to learn a shortcut. Uh, because you'll probably do this task a lot um, I would def I'd definitely learn to zoom with a, a scroll wheel on a mouse. That can also work on a tablet as well where we're using the, slide, uh, the slider bar on the left hand side. Um, and to use the zoom wheel you basically go into edit and your preferences and you can set it up as far as your interface is concerned. Uh, workspace is concerned I should say. Alright so um, I'm going to kind of be zooming in however if I want to do it in a manual way I can press the control key and press the minus to go out and the control key on the key at uh, the keyboard and press the plus to zoom in. Okay so e either way there's lots of ways to actually zoom in and out. I tend to use the scroll wheel more than anything else. The next thing you'll want to do is basically in the layout is be able to change an image size on the fly without actually having to crop it specifically and so on. And the way to do this, so the way to actually make this headshot image, let me just select onto the move tool again, remember V is the shortcut for it, but what I want to do is make this image smaller perhaps, yes, so I can actually see the whole of his uh, kind of um, um, torso as such really as well. Now to do that we want to transform it and if you just go uh, into the edit and go in into the transform you've got op options here um, but what we're going to use is basically the free transform. When we click on the free transform and we're zoomed out we can see the box coldness here yes and all we need uh, we need to do uh, is to basically just grab one of the cor uh, the corners and it will shrink down the image now it's proportional until i press the shift key okay so if i press the shift key it does weird things okay if i don't press the shift shift key it keeps to it as it was so um if we want to actually do do that again obviously we can go up into the slow way would be to the edit and the free transform but this is one of the uh, the shortcuts the control T that pretty much you're going to use throughout your whole career of using Photoshop just in the same way as the zoom in in and out control plus to zoom in control minus to zoom out control T is going to be one that we can use to actually transform an image so by grabbing a cor a corner or an edge or a bottom will actually transform the image to the size. Now you you can see I've kind of made this one pixel, uh, sorry this one image fit the whole image itself. So if I just double click on that, that will actually set the transform command and basically we've now got a side, a side by side image. So the next thing would do if I was doing the likes of a um, a model card would be to add some text and we'll do that in a future kind of film as well um, but first of all let's look at an image where we're basically going to add sp certain size squares or a certain size kind of product as such really so we'll leave this this one live on screen we don't need this image because it's already on the other doc document Remember, because at this stage it's two layers, I have to save it as a basically a PSD. So if I go to Shift Control S, that's File Save As, and then I want to actually do it as uh, Layout Card. You can see automatically it chooses the Photoshop as my file. Just pressing Save. Just going to press OK to that. And now, if I want to, I can shut down this document, and basically it's gone. Right, let's uh, create a kind of a multi-image uh, uh, model card for a minute. So we're going to go into File, New, and we're going to create a uh, model card template. And at this stage, we want it to be a resolution of 300 pixels per inch. And we're going to go for a size. So let's go for in inches. Or are we going to go for a certain size? In fact, if we go for an international paper size here and we go for A4, uh, that's pretty much what we want anyway. So this is an A4. It automatically selects the actual sizes for you 
and it basically sets the resolution to 300 as well. In this case, it's put it into an RGB mode. If you were going out to a commercial printer, you might need to swap this to CMYK. We can always swap um, the document into CMYK at a later date. This will adjust the color slide, uh, slightly as well. If we're just going out to a photo lab though and some other commercial printers, they will accept the, R, uh, the RGB as the, stand, uh, the standard file. So we're going to start ourselves with a white background and we're just going to press OK. Now remember at this stage it's a, tem a template so we want to uh, use this time and time again. What, what we're going to do is basically first of all create a, uh, a size of image that is going to go in here um, to actually be the model card and then we're going to actually put some other images down at the bottom so we can choose a certain size of image if we don't know exactly what we want by basically clicking onto the marquee rectang uh, rectangle tool here and basically going ahead and making a selection around a part of the background document so if you're not quite sure about what size you want in here um, by making the marquee selection this will give you a starting guide anyway yes now if we just um, uh, go to control C so this would be the same as going to edit and copy and then if I um, paste it so edit and paste now what I've got is the image here which is a, a, a different size to the overall document below yeah if I want to know what size this is I can press the control key yes and basically that will make that selection if at any stage I copy it um, like we just did with the marquee when we kind of uh, created that layer if I now go to file new it automatically comes up with the pixel size that we're seeing here so if I go headshot let's just say pressing OK this image is the headshot image size now in the crop tool um, as we see here in the resolution at the top we've basically got different op options to work with the crop in we'll come back to this at a later stage but if you know an exact crop that you want then basically we can actually set it in the dimensions here including the resolution and so on right let's go get an image so file open and if we drag in the headshot that we want or open the headshot that we want if I now basically drag this image remember the move tool drag and select it we're gonna just let go but if I want it to actually pop it bang smack in the middle if I press the shift key before I let go of the mouse it basically drops it straight in into the middle now you can see already that this is enlarged because of the different pixel size compared to this image as the last image okie doke now we want to make this smaller so we're going to go to control T we're going to drag the bounding lines again to get to the exact point that we want Remove, uh, move the actual image to any kind of selection here double click it and then technically this is the image that we need to drag into this photograph so at this stage we can basically just delete this layer and all we need now is our head our headshot layer so once more we drag it and we drag it and drop it so we remember press the shift key by doing that that puts it perfectly into the middle of the actual doc, uh, document itself and it's done but if you notice though it basically um, hasn't applied the crop that we started off with in fact what it's done is because we didn't flatten this layer if we control T again you can see what I did was drag the whole box uh, the whole image into the new layer so technically this image here all I did was drag it onto that layer let it go and it dropped it in again okay so think about what we're trying to achieve but what we've got here is a, lo a lovely kind of layout image 
if I want this to really work in the way that we want, uh, we want it to, flatten the document first. That basically gets rid of all the other pixels on the edges and the sides. Now we can actually drag it onto here, and now we get our image in the exact size that we want it to be. Now, if you notice, when we're moving an image from side to side, up and down, you start to get these smart guides coming up. And that's really what we're look, looking for, for the sake of the alignment. So in this case, we've got some really kind of um, sim, uh, simple ways as far as the guides to centralize the image. We want to drop uh, his name across the bottom here. Yes. And we also want to drop some other images. So if we go to the uh, marquee selection tool for a minute and we say, OK, I want a um, a square so I'm pressing the shift shift key while I drag out the mar uh, the marquee and then I'm just going to press copy and when I go to file new basically it remembers the square size that we just did I can just do this as square headshot and now with any other images I basically just need to make them in the size that I want. So in other words, if I want the um, orange photograph, I can just double click it. I can now kind of drag it onto the square. I can control T. You can see why the zoom tool now drag it into the size that I want. And then we kind of flatten that image. And there's our first square. So now I can just basically drag it, drop it onto the TED, the TED plate. Remember, we've still got a marquee here. So if we basically drop it within the, mar the marquee itself, and then we try and move the image, uh, you'll find that you're only going to move a part of the image. So we need to deselect. Control D, D deselects it. So here, once more, we've got our first square. Then we go back to our square head, uh, the headshot again. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is open up bridge. We've got the other images. And all I'm going to do is basically just drag it over to the side. And now when I drag another image onto the square, it's going to automatically kind of free transform to the size. And there's a much quicker way. So just double click in that and then basically dragging it on. Go back here again to our square, go and grab another image. Because this is smaller in the uh, the height, I need to enlarge this in the size. It just takes the, wi uh, the widest edge. Double clicking once more, flattening that layer, and basically now we're dragging it on top. So the same thing applies is that once they're all aligned, we can basically use these to just have a, a simple alignment going throughout. If I now shift click these layers, yes, I can move them together and I can also group them together as well. So in other words, if I want them to move as one, I can just uh, put a link on to them and then basically if I deselect it, now they all move as one. So when we're looking at the montage, we're, we're looking at how we can basically uh, put images together on a page. And it's going to be all in relationship to a pixel designed to actually match another pixel as such, really. If you've linked the layers um, here and you want to unlink them, basically at any stage, you can link un unlink more uh, at any stage just by selecting the layer, clicking on the uh, link button here and now we can actually move this along with it and things really. Okay, if you want a perfect alignment watch out for the same kind of numbers kind of coming through here when we start to actually move them together. So that is the kind of the making of a basic mon montage and a layout and we'll continue this through into another episode where we're adding in some text.